Hello, welcome to the it's Donahue the Group. Year. We're glad you could join us for this lively half hour of conversation about local issues. We're in this beautiful studio with this beautiful Christmas tree. If it appears to be coming out of Ken Risto's head, it is. <laughs> then it's just the Christmas tree killer. But we think it's a very beautiful set. The clock is working now, so all is well with the city. Now you might ask, how can the city do this and still hold the budget levy the same? Not the levy, the rate the same. I think it was kind of lost in the storm and drong of the past couple of weeks uh, at, at the city level that the uh, council and the mayor did a wonderful job, department heads, at keeping the, uh, the tax levy the same at $8.42 per thousand. Good, bad, indifferent, not enough? Well, I, so I thank you is in order. Yeah, thank you, yeah, <laughs> thank thank you, you is in order. order. <laughs> if the county's gone down and the city's the same, and we keep spending as well. no money. <laughs> the school. You know, what's, what is school? What is school? <laughs> skyrocketing, skyrocketing. I wouldn't say skyrocketing, but there, yeah, there have been some increases. Much of that increase on the, on the school budget side is because of the referendums, and people knew that going in. They were told exactly that the property taxes would probably go up a little bit for a couple of years. I remember the uh, presentation. 20, I think. Tw no, not the next 20 years. <laughs> no, it bubbled. It bubbled. It was going to go up for two years or three years and then, and then, uh, right. then come back down. Okay. So yeah, you're, you're paying for those big field houses and a very beautiful school over at Jefferson. I've actually had a chance to see it the other day. Okay. It's a beautiful facility. If nobody's been there uh, yet, they should go and see it. It's a vibrant, uh, great, uh, great place to be. One of the things that I think might be difficult for people to understand, I know when I joined the school board, it took me a little time to figure out the difference between the levy and the rate. The tax levy is actually going up quite a bit. Well, not quite a bit, but four hundred and fifty thousand dollars I think in a how much is the whole budget its budget is um, I believe in the neighborhood of uh, I don't know <laughs> that um, but the um, the budget will rise by four hundred fifty thousand dollars to nearly twenty one point one million dollars that's the property tax piece of the budget the budget itself is is somewhat larger um, so it, it, the, the amount is actually going up, but the, the levy itself, I'm sorry, the rate itself will stay the same. Um, this is because the city is growing. And, um, we so have that, not been hit by property tax value decreases as some communities have. So right, right. That helps. Yeah, it does help. So um, the new budget includes uh, six new patrol officers um, uh, replacing um, uh, members who have retired or left the department, uh, new firefighters. Um, sounds like a reasonable use of the budget. I do think that uh, department, uh, departments were called upon to really look creatively at how to save money and, and so forth. I think the city is thinking about saving or selling some land as well. I'm not aware. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there is some proposals to sell a couple of pieces or parcels or properties that the, you know, the city does own currently. And that's built into that budget. And they're making a guesstimate of what they're going to be able to sell. The current real estate market, whether they're going to get that price, whether they're going to sell it at all, it'll be interesting to find out. Um, yeah. But be able to hold it uh, in this kind of environment with the health care costs rising, with energy costs rising, to keep the, the, the rate the same is a pretty impressive um, accomplishment and one that the mayor ran on. So um, mm -hmm. he'll be able to run on that uh, when he decide, if he decides to run again. Right. Sounds like he's going to. And I think. Um uh, the huge savings in health insurance uh, premiums uh, projected at 1.5 million could have been 2 million, but at least 1.5 million, uh, I think, is is quite substantial. I know Susan Hart, the mayor's administrative officer, was responsible at least in part for for mining those savings and uh, and having uh, brought it before the uh, council, which I think acted um, smartly in doing that. Um, so I think these are. These are good signs. The county levy actually went down. The dollar amount went down, didn't it, Cal? Mm -hmm. So not only is the rate going down, but we're being visited by little birds here. So if you hear the chirp, chirp, chirping of birds, it's just springtime. Twelve days of Christmas. <laughs> <is coming. laughs> yeah. Either that or we have fans in the animal kingdom. That <laughs> Look, there's a partridge. <laughs> Exactly. Six loons. Uh, well, in any event, um, I, th well, I I just have one question. Uh, I mean, they did the, some insurance uh, changes, the early retirement changes, and they used... Sunny Ridge. 
Oh, I'm, oh, you're the county. I was thinking of the city. Oh, but okay. Sunny Ridge, yeah, they got rid of Sunny Ridge for the county coming down. Yeah. Well, I think that's the only way the county could do that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and. Um, but I was thinking this vehicle fund, did, they, did that get used for early retirements and uh, some insurance changes? So there was a little fund that they could play with to uh, maybe get a balance uh, to hold a, the tax rate the same. And maybe next year, though, they won't have that. I know a few of the aldermen and older women are very nervous that uh, there have been some quick fixes and some things that are being done, and it'll be interesting to see if these things are sustainable yes. over a period of time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the uh, state of Wisconsin did that, of course. I remember just yeah. the huge discount of the um, tobacco settlement. Uh, oh, the state yeah. sold the, its tobacco settlement to a broker, essentially, and received, I don't know, 35 or 40 cents on the dollar, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken, and that fixed the whole, you know, right then and there. But, uh, I mean, one could certainly argue that that was not necessarily smart budgeting. But, uh, but I think uh, overall it, it will be interesting to, to, see how it, uh, to see how it works out. The vehicle fund, as I understand, is going to be used in large part for prepaying or paying down the city's uh, pension liability to the, uh, to the state. And I know the school district did that. I can't remember if the county did that or not, but I think that's a pretty smart way of doing business and and um, and seeing how things go. So, but uh, in any event, uh, I think that very good news from the count from the city. Um, so that's a nice Christmas present when you get your well, yeah. whatever time you get your tax bill, you're going to look at it and say, oh my gosh, but. You can take out last year's and say, oh, it's not too bad. Right. And of course, we always have to remember that the tax bill is not just the city. I think exactly. city residents seem to think, or can think, um, that the tax bill is just the city. It's not. The biggest chunk, of course, is, is the school district. The county is a big chunk. The city is a big chunk. Um, LTC, LTC is a tiny Mill chunk. And a half, yeah, right. Yeah. So, so that's not not so substantial. But uh, everyone has um, mm -hmm. has some hands in the hands in the pie, as it were. So, it's, so that'll be interesting. Uh, the first vote on the budget, uh, actually, uh, which I consider to be fairly revolutionary news, ended up on page seven of the Sheboygan Press that Tuesday supplanted by much, much more important information, and that is... <laughs> Somebody walking their dog? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the censure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the, the, um, the city council, doing what the city council does, you know, we really c probably can't get too opinionated on this show. Oh, that's right, we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> but, uh, because it's Christmas? <laughs> in any event... Um, were you on the council when Mayor yes. Schneider was censured? Actually, I went, I went on vacation, and I come back from vacation, and I discovered he was censured. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gone for two weeks. So what they, happens when you go away? Where they <laughs> met, and I thought, uh, what? Uh, anyway, I... And wasn't it, it, it... And it was interesting to me, because as, as, as I have been told, but don't know myself, Alderman Terry Van Akron was the moving force behind that censure. Now, that may or may not be true, but that's what I've been told. Oh, yeah, I don't, well, I don't know. Maybe okay. it's the truth, but I, I think it's a combination of a couple things. Uh, the mayor had an opportunity to clean up the lakefront. If you remember, Broughton Drive was all shrubs, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a firm that was in the area cleaning up shrubs and trees, and maybe on the other side of the street. So he took advantage of, the, uh, of a good deal to do the, the shrubs, well, I don't think Mary Knauf liked that because she was head of the parks or the, you know, parks and forestry and, you know, you're tearing down shrubs and trees and we didn't go through channels. You didn't go through a committee. Didn't, so maybe somebody got onto an alderman and said, you know, challenge that kind of thing. It was already done. And then I think there was also some paving in, ba in alleys uh, that uh, he had done for, as we were paving streets, uh, paved a couple alleys for uh, a colleague or a friend or something. Ah. I don't know if you remember. And then that wasn't budgeted. And uh, so the alderman <laughs> got a little upset, you know. Uh, so but it was for actions that he was doing to make the city better. And uh -huh. So they decided to censure him for it. And do it you was remember? close vote, too. Uh -huh. Do you remember what term that was in? Was that his, because Schneider had 
three full terms. Okay, well, it may have been the first. When did the Broughton Drive get? Or maybe the early second term or something because okay. Broughton Drive was around uh, before the marina came. So he went on to continue to have a, a fairly vibrant uh, political life after that. Yeah, yeah. So the question, I think, will be what will happen to uh, Alder Person Meyer. Um, it was kind of a strange process for those of us who aren't used to the censure process, and it's my sense maybe the council wasn't used to it either because apparently a few mistakes were made here or there. The main problem I have with it is using uh, a fairly serious um, and specific process or body of rules to address conduct. Um, I don't know. I, uh, the, 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 the city attorney seemed to struggle with whether or not a private conversation was actually a violation of the ethics code. Um, I think at one point he said no, because there are certain things in the ethics code that those are the violations. It's primarily designed to, to ensure that people don't profit economically from their, their service on the, on the council. All governing bodies have these. But there's some, um, <coughs> I, th I think Alderman Hanna called them moral statements at the beginning, sort of the representations of of why we have the, these kinds of things. And, and I believe ultimately the city attorney said that those were enforceable rules that could be acted on. Your thoughts? I watched the debate the following night, and you're absolutely right. The sense I got was that as you, as you have a, like a preamble in the United States Constitution which talks about general goals and what we're all about and what we want to accomplish here, and then you get into the nitty-gritty nitty of how we're going to make laws and who's got what powers and all that kind of thing. The ethics code seems to have the same sort of general idea that people should behave in such a manner and deportment that uh, brings you know, honor and integrity to the office and all that sort of thing. Um, and then it goes, like you said, into very, very specific, I actually looked at it, uh, very, very specific kinds of behaviors. Uh, and so, there, so there, then the question is exactly, and the city did, attorney, attorney did seem to really struggle with that question, and I would think that between the meetings, you would have some time to think about it. Um, and maybe it's just one of those areas of the law that's just vague and, and, and it's not, you know, it's, we find, it'd be hard to find out whether you really can actually punish people for it. It seems that the easier way to do is to look at, the council does have some codes of conduct, do they not? It seems to me that they do. I got the impression from the debate and the discussion, they weren't online that I could find unless they're hidden someplace and I couldn't find them. Well, the it'd been better probably to censure her uh, under the code of conduct that you might have for the for the common council, as opposed to the uh, to the code of ethics, which is really a state statute, right? Well, it adopts the state statute. The the, the city ordinance is right. fairly limited. There are lots of other things the city could put into that code Correct. of ethics, and and for whatever reason, when they enacted the ordinance, they <clears throat> apparently chose not to do it. But right. um, I mean, the essence of it is you can't make money, right? And use your influence to make profit essentially from from your your position on on the council which is a very good I mean yeah. Judge Ziegler or Justice Ziegler has you know certainly been struggling with you know those concepts and, and so forth so um, I guess the main concern that I would have I think it's a political issue and people are it's it's politics That's what well, I think. and it's the conduct of people in office and what they how they conduct themselves ought to be at a level where you don't get too picky and, you know, when I was in the legislature, we had our disagreements with people and we'd say, oh, that person's a jerk, you know, but you don't oftentimes confront them and, and say things, I'm going to do this or that. You know, there's certain things that you have to have a thick skin and you just accept the fact that you differ with somebody and you just go on. And you go on. And, and you right. realize that in the, in, in, in the conduct of business, um, people not having health care and kids getting an education and roads being paved are more important than whether somebody's a jerk or not, you know. And that's, that's where you've got to, I think, develop a thick skin plus also as a candidate or a participant in government saying this isn't what I ought to be doing and this is something that's a waste of my time and will get a sort of a negative infringement on the whole process if it becomes too public of a petty type 
situation. Right, and there may be a fear that that will happen. I mean, Alderman Ryan starts it by saying, you know, the mayor put his foot in his mouth. I mean, that wasn't very courteous. And then Alderperson Meyer apparently said some fairly nasty things, and who knows what that whole conversation mm -hmm. was about, and certainly not worthy of right. of, of the office. And um, I don't know us how older people ought to be saying discourteous things that are headlines. I don't know. Um, it depends on how elevated we want our our civil government to be. I, I, I kind of want it to be elevated. The school board, we all actually managed not to really call each other's name, call each other names and so forth. I always said the code of conduct was no hitting, punching, kicking, spitting. <laughs> and now we need no to name add. Calling. And no name calling. No name calling, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Um, the kids have codes of conduct, you know. So. They treat each other. So yeah. I think. I think the city council needs to really pat itself on the back for the fine work they did on the budget and to re reinforce for city residents that, that it's their interest that they have at heart and, mm. and uh, hopefully they'll be able to focus on those things and that this will, number one, oh. kind of fade in people's memories just as it did for Mayor Schneider and number two, uh, not happen a lot again. Yeah. So this is a slippery slope. And, and, and develop a matureness of there are a lot of newcomers. I mean, the mayor is relatively new, and their council members are new. That this is an arena where you don't get into this petty stuff. This is you get to the bigger leagues. You just got to learn to conduct yourself in a in a different level, and you pass on things when certain conduct, certain things are made. I mean, I if you get upset over little things, it's just going to not let the wheels of government turn the way they ought to. Yeah. Well, and I think the mayor did mention um, in that letter to the editor. I don't know if we commented on it last time it's hard to hard to remember but uh, I think he did say that he was going to start getting a thicker skin and mm. that's probably a, sure. a good course of conduct for him to take but you know one of the things that kind of disturbed me a little bit is that the council members are arguing through the media uh, when when Alderman Gisha introduced this ethics resolution or there was resolution to go to the ethics board and he then sent copies to the radio station. Of course, he worked there, and he sent Ooh. copies to the media. And I thought, you don't do that. I mean, they're, they're, you know, I mean, you do. People do that, mm -hmm. but if if you're really serious, you just go about your business yeah. and let the media find out that you've done this. So he's creating a situation, and I, I was just disappointed that he, he did that. It would have been better he just introduced the resolution, talked to his fellow aldermen, have them sign on, and it comes up and it gets voted on, yes or no. Well, you know, it's a, he's a, pushing it. a double-edged yeah. sword having, <laughs> having and TV. Why. And you wonder why, yeah. Is, I mean, Timmy thinks he protests a bit much. <laughs> yeah. a, th a thoughtful comment from <laughs> Professor Risto. No, I, just, I, I, I got the same impression, Tom, that um, the sort of outrage that was sort of being I mean, it was a it was a very um, thoughtless thing for Alder Woman Meyer to right. do. Yep. It was probably a little tacky for for Ryan to go public and, and make a, a private conversation something public. Yeah. You just simply say you, you, probably there should have been more water off the back. But these are personalities, obviously, that are quite frankly a little immature for public services. Cal was mm -hmm. talking about, and they're just young, and they'll learn that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there are things I've said when I was younger that I wish I could take back, right. you know. Yeah. Uh, but then I think there were there I think there were some opportunists yeah, who okay, had an opportunity good. to be in front of the cameras and mm -hmm. and to make some hay about it. It could have been could have been handled in lots of different ways. Uh, than, than this, and so one wonders what the, all the agendas are here. This well, isn't the end of civil society as we know it. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> you know, you think it's like the ro end of the Roman Empire. Fire. Caesar was taking power here. You know. Well, so. and, and much as we love these TV cameras and we really appreciate the opportunity to flap our lips here, mm -hmm. it is an interesting process when you introduce a television camera into a mm -hmm. courtroom, a boardroom, a city council chamber, or now the Wisconsin the legislature, legislature right. after mm -hmm. many, many years. Uh, uh, now having those matters uh, uh, televised, I know I was pretty appalled when the cameras came into the into the school board room. Ultimately, I think it was fine; it was great, and, and it was a good thing. But I thought, oh dear, <laughs> now we need to you know class our act up a little bit. And actually, we were fairly classy to begin with. 
but there's just that tendency to want to play to the camera instead of attending to the business around the table and, and I think that's absolutely human nature and to have cameras in these meetings I think is extremely important and I would never suggest that they be taken away but it does I think it adds a dynamic that uh, that is not there otherwise and uh, so it'll be interesting to to see how it how I watched it school board out. meetings before and after the cameras and I think oh I think you're absolutely right overall uh, it gives people an opportunity to see what's going on that they never had an opportunity a lot of us aren't going to especially who are a little older and especially when the weather gets lousy to really know what's going on at school board meetings or city council meetings and this gives people an opportunity to see what's going on and be more informed and that's all to the good but people's behavior do change there were certain uh, board members who rarely said anything and when they did it was pretty uh, important uh, or raised an issue and, and now they were a lot more chatty <laughs> and they were saying things that I was sitting in the audience saying I'm not quite sure why they were making that comment it was rather silly but it is like everybody needs to have their five minutes of camera time I suppose but, well uh, it's just moving on and as we hope the City Council will so shall we um, and, and this really speaks to both in the county and the city uh, they're going to be new faces I'm a kind of a um, I don't know if amazed is the word, but um, uh, the number of retirements on the county board of long, long, long-term members is, I think, pretty interesting. It's um, like a class that's graduating. Here. Exactly, yeah. exactly. There was a great article in the Saturday uh, Sheboygan Press about Jim Gilligan, who uh, is a long, long, long-term yeah. member. They're all about the same age in the 80s. And it's, right. They've been around for 20 to 40 years. Right. They're all leaving. Bill Seibold, who I've worked with, yeah. and Bill and uh, and just. A, a particular word about Bill Jens. I think all these county board supervisors were terrific, but I just have a special place in my heart for 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 Bill Jens, who has been not only uh, the chair of the county board and I think a voice of conscience for that body mm -hmm. and chair of the town of Lima, and one of the most honorable people that I have ever dealt with. And it's it's been a pleasure to work with him and, and all the supervisors, but uh, uh, but. It, it, just personally, I'm going to miss Bill, I think, as, as much as anybody. And uh, he's just a, a swell guy. And uh, justice is done when, uh, when Bill Jens is around. And I think that's pretty, pretty amazing. Um, it's not amazing. It's just the way it is. But um, other people living, uh, leaving, Dan Berg is not running. Will he run for the city council again, I wonder? I, I don't know if that will be his. his uh, I mean, that's interesting. Uh, Ken Conger, uh, I think Ken had said that his term would be relatively short. He's been mm -hmm. on six years, though, and mm -hmm. I think has done a fine job. Yeah. Henry Nelson is a fairly new, and um, uh, and I understand a fine supervisor, Harold Reimer, a good guy, Val Schultz. Was, mm -hmm. Now, was Val on the city council? Val was on the city council, yes. And, and he lost a kind of bitter race there on, on the council. Um, and I, don't, I don't remember who it was, Bonnie Serta or... But I don't remember who, it, who we lost to, and it was kind of recent. It was recent, and I think a, a then little. He, then he ran for a county supervisor and got elected. And so I, I, and I don't know. I think he's done a fine job, but I'm, I'm just wondering what his, what his thoughts are if he's going to, if, if Mr. Berg and Mr. Schultz are going to jump back into the, uh, into the city council race because that leads me to the next piece, which is we have eight alder people who are going to be up for re-election, mm -hmm. and as I understand. Um, first of all, running for city council does not take a whole lot. You only need 20 signatures on nomination papers from your district. And I'm looking right at the camera because people who are out there and interested in, in city government ought to think about, or county government ought to think about running. It's, it's an interesting experience and makes you a better person and great public service. That's my pitch. Um, uh, but... Um, um, uh, Richard Manny has already indicated he's not running. Uh, if if, if a, an elected official fi files a notice of non-intent to run, then the usual nomination time is in place. But if you don't file that notice, in other words, you're an incumbent and you just don't file, there's another five days? Yes. Mm -hmm. Another five days to, to file nomination papers. That's a relatively papers. new law and it was put in place yeah, because there are people who have handpicked their their successor and then on the last day uh, that person puts their papers in and the other guy doesn't and 
obviously everybody thought the incumbent was going to continue and somebody just slipped in the back door. Okay. Is what, uh, so, so they're saying if you're going to play that game, we're going to give the process or the system a number of days after that for someone else to now file papers. And that okay. seems fair. It is. It was. And it, it happened in legislative races frequently. A long time incumbent would handpick one of their staff people or something like that. It happened in Milwaukee in a couple of cases huh. where they filed papers and people just said, well, we didn't know that this person was going to run. There were about 20 people who were waiting for this person to, to retire. retire. Okay. And, and they okay. just were schnookered out of the game. Well, and of course, city council only, only requires 20 signatures. Okay. Obviously, a legislative position is, is much more significant. Well, um, Bob Ryan is up. I'm sure Mr. Ryan will be running. Gene Kittleson uh, from the 3rd District. Um, Gene has been on at least two terms. Yep. I believe this yes. would be her third term. Uh, Jim Boren is up. He's brand new. Um, and I would expect uh, and is now or would likely be the new chair of the, of the Committee of the Whole as uh, Alderman Meyer has been taken from that position. Jean Clayunis has been in just one term. This is her first and term. And she's quite thoughtful. Bonnie Serta has been on, now Bonnie Smith. Yeah, has, me, Bonnie Smith, right. Right. Um, and, um, My understanding is she's not going to run. Okay. Uh, she works out at the university now. She huh. recently got married. She works in the business office uh, full time. She was a student out there for a while while she was doing other things and also going to school and working part time. And so now she's kind of had a full time job out there, recently got married, and she was talking to me like, uh, this is going to be my last term. Okay. She's not going to. Okay. So I don't know that she's announced it, but so I'm probably overstepping my bounds. <laughs> no, you heard it here on the Donahue she, Group. She can, and I, you know, but uh, <laughs> she had indicated she thinks it's going to be her last term. She's not going to run again. Cutting edge news here, right here in this room <laughs> with the Christmas tree. tree with the so, Christmas tree. So, yeah. Um, uh, Alderman Hanna is up for re election. I would fully expect that he'll run again. Um, he hardly had an opponent last time, and uh, so I don't know is how anyone will come out of the woodwork there. I think he's established a pretty strong position in a fairly short period of time. And then uh, Silas Vanderweel in the 8th District is up. Um, so it will be interesting to see who stays and who leaves. Manny and maybe Smith leaving, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it may be... Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting to see... Uh, to see how and what the that whole goes. theme will be. I mean, it's, we've had a number of themes where let's have change, let's have new faces. faces. Now we have new faces and their slip ups and what they say to <laughs> who and how yeah, often yeah. gets them in trouble. And now people say, well, we got to do something about this board. You know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> More new so, faces, I guess. Yes. Yes. I would think Cuyunas and Kittleson and Bourne uh, are going to be just fine. They conducted themselves real well in this whole process. And it's still a little while away and people's memories will fade. I don't think they're going to be any uh, serious trouble unless some issue comes up that they happen to be on the wrong side of. But, I mean, property taxes have been held reasonably oh, in advance. Yeah. Uh, the, the police station is done. There's been lots of progress on lots of issues. I don't sense at this point that people are are angry at the general counsel like, like we were feeling about a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. So, unless, you know, again, but politics, a couple of weeks. It was a well, long time. There you go. We'll end with those words tonight, and thank you for joining us for this wonderful half hour.